My name is Scott Simpson, and this lecture is on Swan Gans catheter positioning. So we know that Swan Gans catheters are used to monitor pulmonary capillary wedge pressures, and this is an estimate of left atrial pressures. And these are usually placed via an internal jugular vein. Sometimes a subclavian or femoral approach can be used. Ideal positioning for these catheters is usually within the main pulmonary artery, the right or left pulmonary arteries, or the proximal interlobar pulmonary arteries. And the problem is, is if they're placed too distally within the distal lobar or segmental pulmonary arteries, especially for prolonged periods of time, can lead to some complications such as aneurysms or infarcts. In order to locate the tip, you have to understand the anatomy. And the anatomy, the two key elements here are the airways and the pulmonary arteries and their relationship to each other. So let's quickly review that. Here's a normal frontal chest x-ray that we're going to use as our standard. The first thing we have to talk about is the airways, and we can see that the trachea extends from the thoracic inlet into the chest cavity and then divides at the level of the carina into the right main stem airway, which is very short and vertically oriented, and to the left main stem airway, which is more horizontal and has a longer course. The first branch coming off the right main stem airway is the right upper lobe bronchus. This is again very horizontally oriented and short. And then coming off of the, um, beyond this branch point is the bronchus intermedius. This is a vertically oriented airway. The arteries, the first one that comes off is gonna be the main pulmonary artery. This comes off the right ventricle. And we can see that here. The right, the pulmonary artery then divides into the right and left pulmonary arteries. We see that the right pulmonary artery has a very horizontal course, whereas the left pulmonary artery kind of goes up and over the left main stem airway. Other relevant anatomy is the upper lobe pulmonary arteries as well as the interlobar pulmonary arteries. The interlobar pulmonary arteries and the upper lobe pulmonary arteries are oriented much more vertically as opposed to the more horizontally oriented main stem pulmonary arteries. Here again is our normal frontal chest action. And the key thing here is the relationship of the arteries to the airways, because we can't really see the arteries that well, but we can usually make out the airways on the chest radiograph. The first artery that we're gonna see is the main pulmonary artery. And the main pulmonary artery begins just below the left main stem and typically ends a couple centimeters just above it within this area here. And you can see its relationship to the left main stem airway. And so this is really the location of the main pulmonary artery. The right pulmonary artery begins just at the level of the mid left main stem, bron main stem bronchus and terminates kind of the level of the mid or proximal right main stem airway. And we could expect the main pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery to be in this area here. The left pulmonary artery is always gonna be above the left main stem airway, beginning kind of about halfway through it and then terminating out in the hilar area. So we expect the main stem pulmonary, the, the left main pulmonary artery to be just above the left main stem airway in this area here. Here are these structures superimposed on each other. So you can see the anatomical relationships again to the trachea and main stem airways. And here again is the target areas that we wanna look for catheter position. So let's look at some examples. So this being an example of a swan within the main pulmonary artery. See its location of the tip of the Swan-Gans catheter, which would be just above or just below the left main stem airway. Here's another catheter coming down. We can see that the catheter is entering the main pulmonary artery, but going up and over the left main stem airway and slightly curved to the left. There's a Swan-Gans catheter in the left pulmonary artery, and we can see its relationship here when we subtract out the anatomy. And again, notice its location above the left main stem airway, which we can see in this area in here. Here's an example of a Swan-Gans catheter within the left intralobar pulmonary artery. Notice how this catheter looks like it's looping on itself. This is not the case. It's just going up and over the left main stem airway and then down into the intralobar pulmonary artery. Again, we can see the left main stem airway in this area in here. Here's a catheter within the right pulmonary artery. And we can see it entering the main pulmonary artery and then coming, having this horizontal course. And we can see that it terminates below the main stem airway, the right main stem airway, which is in here. Here's a catheter that's a little bit more distal. This catheter is within the proximal right interlobar pulmonary artery. And notice how it extends beyond the level of the SVC. And we can again see the main stem airway in here. When you get beyond the main stem airway and it's slightly down slope, that's how you know it's in the right interlobar pulmonary artery. Sometimes we can see these catheters a little bit further out down in the 
distal aspects of the right interlobar pulmonary artery. And here's a catheter that's entering the right upper lobe pulmonary artery. Again, if we use the right main stem bronchus as the cutoff of that, we can see that the catheter begins to slightly upslope towards the upper lobe pulmonary artery. So as a good rule of thumb, if the catheter projects within the confines of the hilar contours, it's generally okay. So here's your hilar contours, and here's all the catheters that we had just looked at. And we can see for the most part, these catheters project within the hilar contours, within the proximal interlobar pulmonary arteries and the main pulmonary arteries. The exception to that are portions of the proximal left interlobar pulmonary artery, which we could see extending just beyond the hilar contour, and that's generally okay. So in conclusion, in order to correctly identify the location of the Swan-Ganz catheter tips, you need to understand the pulmonary and airway anatomy as, in, as well as how they relate to each other. Ideal position is within the central pulmonary arteries, which are usually medial to the hilar contours. And this is important because distal placement, particularly if prolonged, can lead to complications. Thank you.